Hi, I'm Joe Holtz with Casco Marine, and today we're going to go through how to properly troubleshoot and diagnose uh, one of the more common field issues, which would be a GFI or GFCI trip. Uh, for proper troubleshooting, you're going to need a couple tools. First is going to be the megometer, and next you're going to want some electrical tape or duct tape, something to cover the photo eye if you're using a 120 volt C25 control panel. GFCI or GFCB trips, either in the casco control panel or in the circuit that feeds the casco equipment, indicate a short to ground somewhere in the circuit. Before we start, we want to make sure that no one is in the water or in contact with any of the equipment or components of the equipment while the unit is plugged in or the power is running. The first step is to determine if the GFCI trip was a nuisance trip or an actual ground fault in the equipment. Reset the GFCI in the casco control panel or if the unit is plugged into a GFCI receptacle, reset the receptacle GFCI. If the GFCI trips again, you will need to diagnose further. The length of time it takes a GFCI to trip can help point to a possible problem. Immediate GFCI trips often indicate a direct path to ground and can be from cuts in the power cord, quick disconnect issues, or other wire connection problems. Delayed trips often indicate some amount of water in the motor unit and the delay can be from water settling out of the oil mixture while the unit is off. Sporadic trips may indicate nuisance trip scenarios. Further testing is required to pinpoint the problem. The next step in diagnosis is unplugging all of the equipment, including lights if used, from the casco controller or the GFCI receptacle and resetting the GFCI. If the GFCI trips with no equipment plugged in, you may have an issue with the control panel or the receptacle. If using a Casco C25 controller or a GFCI receptacle, it should be replaced. If using a Casco C85 or C95 control panel, you can follow the C85, C95 panel diagnostic steps to determine the faulty components. An alternative way to test if the Casco control panel is the issue is to bypass the controller by plugging the equipment directly into the GFCI protected receptacle or circuit. If the equipment runs without issue, the controller should be replaced or repaired. If lights are being used with a fountain or aerator, the next step is to plug each in individually and monitor for a GFCI trip. Plug the fountain or aerator into the control panel, ensuring the timer is in an on position or a GFCI receptacle and reset the GFCI. If the fountain or aerator trips, then further testing is required to determine where the problem may be. If the unit runs fine, move to testing the lights. Next, unplug the fountain or aerator and plug in the lights. If using a Casco C25 controller, you will need to cover the photo eye with electrical tape for at least 60 seconds to activate the photo eye. If using a C85 or C95 controller, simply ensure both timers are in the on position. If the composite LED lights trip the GFCI by themselves, unplug the lights from the power, remove one fixture at a time, and cap the end of the cord. After each fixture is removed, plug in the lights and reset the GFCI. Replace any lights that cause a GFCI trip. If the lights trip the GFCI with all fixtures removed, the cord will need to be replaced. If the cord failure is only in the cable joiner or splitter, it can be repaired by Casco or an authorized service center. If the stainless steel LED lights trip the GFCI by themselves, they should be sent to Casco for repair. If the unit is determined to be the cause of the GFCI trip, you will now need to use your megometer to further diagnose the problem. With the unit unplugged, use the megometer to test between hot, or the black wire, to ground, and neutral, or the white wire, to ground. To get an accurate reading, make sure the unit and power cord are still submerged in the water. If both tests read good, then the motor and the cord are good, and the problem may exist elsewhere in the circuit. If either read bad or caution, the issue is in the power cord and or the unit. If the unit does not have a quick disconnect installed, you should contact Casco or an authorized service center at this time for further diagnostics and repair. If the unit does utilize a quick disconnect, you can further isolate the issue by disconnecting the quick disconnect and testing the cord and unit individually. Visually inspect the quick disconnect for damage or moisture in and around the pins. Cap the end of the cord and put it back in the water. Using the Mego meter, test hot to ground, neutral to ground, and hot to neutral. If any of those tests read bad or caution, the power cord should be replaced. If a good reading is found, you should still visually inspect the entire length of cord for any cuts or damage, or plug the cord in and reset the GFCI, as a cut in a single wire may produce a good reading, but still cause a GFCI trip. 
Even if the cord was found to be faulty, you should still perform the megometer test on the unit and stub cord to verify there is not a problem there as well. Using the megometer, test between hot to ground and neutral to ground in the quick disconnect of the stub cord. It is best to perform this test while the unit is on its side with the power cord connection down to ensure even a small amount of water is making contact with the electrical connectors. If each test reads good, the unit and the stub cord are fine. If either read bad or caution, the unit and cord should be sent to Casco or an authorized service center for repair. If you are not able to determine any issue with the unit, cord, lights, controller, or receptacle, you may be experiencing nuisance trips. These are random GFCI trip events with no evident reason. They can be a pain to deal with as the cause is often unknown and cannot easily be repeated. Some common things that can lead to a nuisance trip are redundant GFCIs or having more than one GFCI on the same circuit, long power cord runs to the unit or from the main power to the controller, other electrical equipment running on the same circuit making noise or voltage spikes such as irrigation pumps, power supply changes or surges, or poor ground or neutral connections. Checking with an electrician and removing redundant GFCIs, eliminating other equipment on the circuit, or possibly installing a local ground stake at the panel or receptacle may resolve some of these issues. Consult a licensed electrician to ensure what local code allows. This concludes the GFCI troubleshooting video. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us at the phone number or email address below. Thanks for watching.